Oh, we know this one. Joy to the world, the Lord has done. Let every sea. Let every heart. Let every heart. Be buried. And every man need to see. And every man need to see. Go tell it on the mountain real quick.
Oh, y'all here with me? Special treat. You can actually sit down for this one.
Hi, everyone. Welcome. Welcome to Christmas Eve. Um, I'm just going to banter a little bit until the noise of all the children um, goes down the hallway. Just as a, a word for parents, we're currently utilizing the children's library as the children's room and then also the playground because the entire wing over here is taped off. Um, even there were a few classrooms that did not have mold levels in them, but because they have to do remediation over there, the whole wing is taped off. And so um, we're using the children's library right down here and then also the playground if it's not pouring down rain. The door is closing. The silence de descends. That's what bedtime feels like. Okay, folks, we are on the fourth Sunday of Advent. Um, and I joke a whole lot about Christmas being crazy and Advent being um, the season of craziness and, and all of these things that are pulling your attention away from God. But in truth, um, this, this can be, and it's supposed to be one of the holiest seasons of the year. One of the ones that really um, gets our head around the fact that God did this extraordinary thing and that God is doing this extraordinary thing and that everything changed because of what God did in Bethlehem. And if we miss that, then we miss the entire point, right? If we miss that, then we can have a great time with great parties and, and lots of gifts, but we miss the entire significance of the reason this, this has been set aside for us, this season of preparation and this season of, of, of celebration. What we've been doing over the last four weeks is we've been looking at different Christmas carols. Um, you can find all those on the website if you want to see them. O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Uh, this evening we'll be doing a real brief, I mean, depending on what sermon you, service you're in, if you're in the family service, I'm going to say like two sentences. Uh, if you're in the traditional service, I'll talk a little bit more, real brief thing over uh, Joy to the World. This morning I want to talk about Away in a Manger. Away in a Manger is one of the most popular Christmas hymns. I will bet you it's one of the first ones that you learned as a child growing up. Um, it gained popularity. It was written in the late 1800s, and like many of the popular Christmas carols, had a completely fictitious origin story. So for many, many decades, this was attributed to Martin Luther as a hymn that he sang to his children in the 1500s. Um, and the problem is with that is nobody has ever found any hymn like this in Martin Luther's personal papers, and it's not because he didn't write, it's because he didn't write this one. Someone just made that up. Um, the, earliest, the earliest known record we have of uh, this, which was originally called Luther's Cradle Hymn, Away in a Manger, is in fact from the United States, from the 1800s, in a Lutheran community, but definitely English speaking, because there are <laughs> any German version of this is, has obviously been translated from the English. And so some English writer somewhere wrote an English version of this and then invented the fact that they thought Martin Luther wrote this. And then it kind of spread and it became very, very popular throughout the late 1800s and then into today. One of the things that happened, though, when that story spread is this image, it's not mine this time, uh, this image of this... Uh, German reformer, so for those of you who don't know, Martin Luther was the one who started the Protestant Reformation. He was a German priest, monk. Um, he was, um, part of his role was he was committed to celibacy. And then when he uh, led this exit from the Catholic Church and they started overturning all these old traditions, one of the things that was overturned was this idea that um, leaders of the church couldn't have families. And so all of these priests and nuns were getting married and having families. And Luther ended up writing this beautiful devotional um, and the, all of these beautiful writings about how much grace he found in being a father and how much grace he found in, in being a husband. And so that's one of the reasons we think that this was attributed to Luther is that people were going back and reading that and then, then, and then saying, wouldn't this have been a beautiful cradle hymn for him to sing to his son? So it's understandable. Um, what they were tapping into, whoever wrote this song and whoever made it as popular as it was, what they were tapping into was this idea we see in the Christmas story that God really does show up in the most mundane, quiet aspects of the ordinary, everyday life of human beings. I mean, it is oversaid, but it is still true. Kings were not born in mangers. 
In fact, there was probably no other baby in the history of the world that was put in a feeding trough. And yet this one, this one was born in a stable. This one, King of Kings, Lord of Lords, the one we believe is actually God incarnate, the one we believe that is God with us, that's what Emmanuel means, was born in this lowly place, in this normal, ordinary place. And the manger itself, the manger is a symbol of this ordinary place cradled what was in fact the presence of God for those who had eyes to see it. And so many people passed on the street and didn't know what it was. And so many religious leaders were in the temple at that time and didn't know what it was. But the people who knew what it was saw the presence of God in the manger there in front of them. And so this image of this this young girl rocking her child and singing a lullaby became, I think, the inspiration for this Christmas carol that has since become so meaningful to so many people. So when I had children, I gained a new appreciation for how important lullabies are. So before I actually gave birth, I did a whole lot of reading on what it takes to keep a child alive. Feeding, changing, bathing, all of those things that it takes to keep a child alive because I didn't know any of them. And what I found out after the child was born is you do have to do all of those things, but most of what a child needs from you as a parent is in fact intangible. And I don't think I had fully quantified that before I had children. I had this idea in my head that if the baby is fed, and if the baby is dry, and if the baby has everything the baby could possibly want, the baby will be happy, but that is not in fact the case. Because the baby, in fact, has an internal life that you don't even know about. (laughs) And the baby is sometimes sad or scared or feeling something that they cannot even begin to, you know, articulate to themselves, much less to you. But because of this maelstrom that is going on inside the soul of your child, she needs something from you that is other than food and drink and all of these things. She needs comfort and care and love, right? The number of hours I spent with my firstborn just holding and singing and rocking, and that was when she stopped crying. That was when she calmed and stilled. You know, they did an experiment many years ago. This was back before that they'd actually done the study of of how much children need their parents' uh, attachment in, in early childhood, they did a study with monkeys where they had a monkey uh, and they had two fake mothers, fake monkey mothers, robot, I'm not explaining this well. Um, y'all can go look it up, but they had two kind of robot monkey mothers, one that had everything the monkey could need, food, everything, um, everything the monkey could want from parent, and the other one that had all of that but was soft and cuddly. And the monkey, chose the mother that was soft and cuddly. And the scientists started to think, well, maybe children need something more from their mothers (laughs) than just food and drink. And all the mothers were like, yes, duh. Glad you caught up, science. But as after that first experiment, it's gone, and you can actually trace trace the science now. Um, Science always has to confirm what we already knew. And what we knew and what we know is that the human creature has so many needs that we cannot really even articulate on the outside. And sometimes, even if everything becomes all right on the outside, it's still not okay on the inside. And what we need most of all is the comfort and the care of someone who deeply and truly and wholly loves us more than anything in the world. And that's what a lullaby is. It's not the I, it is the I've taken care of you, but it's not really that. It's the, I'm going to stay here until you stop crying. I'm going to rock you as long as it takes for you to calm down inside. And I'm going to tell you that everything is going to be okay. So there was one time last year when my whole family um, got sick for a period of a couple of weeks, because that's what happens with young children. Like the children get it and the parents get it, and then you just pass it around the whole family. And I remember John and I got sick the same day. 
I started to hear feel like a, a little tickle in my throat, and an hour later he had thrown up. So like we were we were we were in this flu together, and John and I, my John is my three year old, um, John and I just went into the same sick bed, both miserable. I was holding him as he was miserable, and and we were being miserable together. Um, and then the time came when I had the audacity to want to take a shower without him. And what happened was I went in the bathroom and closed the door, and you would have thought I disappeared off the face of the earth. He lost his ever-loving mind. And I was in the shower, and I could just hear the screaming coming from the outside of the shower because I had disappeared. I had left. I'd gone off the face of the earth. And I came, so I showered as quickly as I could. I got outside. I wrapped myself in the towel. I brought him close to me, and I was like, John, buddy, it's okay. I'm here. Mommy's here. Mommy's here. And I was, I just did my calming and soothing thing. Mommy's here. And then he took a little breath and he goes, and Johnny's here. And then it was, it was done. The purpose of a lullaby is not to fix everything on the outside. It's to tell the part of you on the inside that everything's going to be okay. Just think about what happened to my little boy. Nothing had changed on the outside. He was still sick. He still felt terrible. But he had the presence of the one who loved him more than anything else in the world, and that presence changed everything. Being with somebody was somehow less traumatic than being without someone. Even though it didn't mean he wasn't sick, even though it didn't mean something had changed, being there changed everything. Presence changed everything. Friends, Christmas is about the fact that God's presence showed up on earth on Christmas. God takes care of us in so many ways. God takes care of the outside things. God answers prayers. And yet, if you are honest with yourself, what you need from God most of the time is for God to hold you and to whisper to your heart of hearts and to tell you within the tumult that is going on in your soul, it's going to be okay. It's going to be okay. What you need, most of all, even as a grown-up, even as a very mature adult in this world, what you need is a lullaby. You need someone who loves you more deeply and more fully than you could possibly imagine telling you because they know it's going to be okay. Friends, there are times in this life when you will feel alone. And there are times in this life where you will have a hurricane within you. There are times in this life when the external circumstances seem so overwhelming that you are not possibly going to be able to get through. And there are times in this life where even if everything on the outside looks okay, yet you are falling apart on the inside and you can't even explain why, not even to yourself. What Christmas means is that in those moments, you are not alone. You are not alone. You are never alone. You are never without the one who loves you more than life itself. You are never without the one who cares for you more than life itself. And you are never without the one who wants from the bottom of his heart to give you whatever comfort you need in this time. And the external circumstances will eventually work them wa- themselves out because they always do and God always has a plan. But in the meantime, at Christmas, what we remember is Mary holding that little baby and rocking him back and forth and then God holding us and wrapping his arms around us and rocking us back and forth and saying like a like a mother to her child, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay, it's going to be okay. I think the reason this hymn became so popular is that adults knew it wasn't just for children. Adults knew it wasn't just for babies. There's a point in all of our concerns but of God who is as intimate and close to us as a parent with a child. The God 
who cares, the God who whispers, the God who rocks, the God who sings, the God who will not leave us alone, no matter what. Christmas, my friends, is presence, and that presence is yours. So don't let anything take it from you this season. Don't let the busyness get in the way. Don't let the meltdowns get in the way. Don't let the frustrations or the family drama or anything else that is happening in your life, don't let it take it away because that is your heritage. It's your Christmas gift. It's the reason we are here. You have the presence of God. You have God's arms around you. You have God's strength within you. You have everything, the part of you that is so far down inside that no one else can see it. You have everything that your soul needs today and always. And so receive it. Receive it this Christmas. Would you join with me in a word of prayer? Almighty God, we're so, we're so grateful, God. We're grateful for all that you have given us. We're grateful for all that... Um, you have offered to us, we're grateful that we are not alone. And we're grateful that when the days come that we don't know if we're going to get up in the morning, God, you're there. And your strength is always enough. And your power is always enough. And your peace is always enough. And so come, Holy Spirit, and consecrate this room. Come, Holy Spirit, and open the hearts of everyone seated here. Come, Holy Spirit, and wrap your arms around every person in this room. To those who weep, Lord, give your comfort. To those who grieve, give your hope. To those who are so frazzled and busy they don't know if they're going to make it until tomorrow, God, calm and settle our spirits. That as we bask in your presence as a child with its mother, we might receive your divine comfort and your divine presence this morning. Come, Holy Spirit, cover us with your grace today. This we pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. As we say together the prayer our Lord taught, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the part of our service we call the offering. If you've not been with us before, our offering is wholehearted, meaning that this is two minutes for you to sit in your seat and pray and consider what it is God would have you offer to him this Christmas. If you have a tangible gift you'd like to give, um, there's a clear box in the back, and you can also give online. I will mention now that our Christmas offering is going towards CCSC, and so if you'd like to participate in that, just make an offering and put Christmas on it, and we will make sure it goes to the right place to help those who need it most during this holiday season. But during this time of offering, we invite you in your heart of hearts to give all of yourself back to the God who offered all of himself to you.
Hey friends, just a couple of quick announcements before we end our time of worship together. Uh, first of all, I did mention this a little bit, but I want to talk a little bit more. Our Christmas offering is to Christian Community Service Center. Um, if you are not familiar with them, they do so much of the hands-on help around the city of Houston, and Houston has been in dire need. Like, if you think your grocery bill has gone up, and it has, imagine if you were a single mom with four kids and one income trying to trying to make all the bills work there are so many in houston right now that are just slipping below the waves and so all of the organizations have been working overtime to try to help people survive ccsc is doing so much we would like to give a christmas present to jesus by making them as we always give them an offering of some sort um Maybe this year we can give a little bit more. This is going to be our Christmas present. And so if you would like to participate in that offering, you can give online. Just write Christmas in the memo line. You can give by a check or an envelope. As long as you put Christmas anywhere on the offering, it will go in the right place. We'll keep the offering open for a little bit after Christmas to make sure all of it goes to the right place. Um, But we want to make sure that we can honor Jesus in a way that he would really appreciate. And so a special Christmas offering to CCSE seems a great way to do that. Uh, this afternoon, today is the day of so much church. You're going to get so much church today. This afternoon, 4 p.m. is our family service. 6 p.m. is our traditional service. The 4 p.m. service is designed for chaos, and so you are welcome to bring all of the children. Um, it will it will have a, a, a small homily, lots of music, lots of interactive things, um, pretty short glow sticks in, in addition to candles, and so lots of things designed for children. The older service, the 6 p.m. service, is our traditional 6 p.m. candlelight with communion and a um, little bit longer sermon. Children are, of course, welcome. It's just not com- designed for them. So join us this afternoon, uh, 4 p.m. or 6 p.m., and then have a wonderful Christmas tomorrow. So after the holidays, we will be kicking off our Table of Nine, which is a, uh, a dinner group that helps you get to know other people at Westminster. If you've not done one of these before, or if you have done one of these before, this is a great way to get to know people within the Westminster community. You sign up, we assign you to a dinner group. That dinner group then meets once a month, January through May gets to know each other, makes some friends, and then May is the end of the commitment. So you're not committing long-term, you're just committing that five months. Um, And so many people have told us that that's really when they made their first friends at Westminster was participating in Table 9. So we are going to be assigning those groups now. Early January is the deadline. If you can sign up for that and you're interested in signing up for that, please go ahead and do um, so that we can get those inner groups settled. I think that's all the announcements. Do we have any others? Uh, Zoom Bible study, Wednesday night at 7. This will be going, this will be the Wednesday night Bible study that will be going um, up until we start our Lenten series. Lent starts starts on on Valentine's Day this year, which is going to be so fun for memes. Um, Ash Wednesday will be on Valentine's Day. And then, uh, and this is a study that will go between now and, and then. Is that all? New Women's Bible Study. The Bible study is uh, on the Book of Mark starting January 17th, 9.30 a.m. That's uh, Wednesday mornings if you're able to participate in that. And that's it. Friends, receive these words of blessing as you go out into the week. My brothers and sisters, go in peace and go in hope. Go in love. Go knowing that as hard as life may be, you do not navigate it alone. Go knowing that whatever heartache you may face in life, has been covered by the grace of one who has faced everything for you. And go knowing that you are held always and forever in the scarred hands of the God who loves you more than you could possibly imagine. And so go protected by that love. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.